Good morning, Fuzzy Biker here with beautiful Springbrook State Park in Guthrie County, Iowa. Uh, anyway, we're here today to talk about this Royal Enfield Classic 350, or as I call it, my Royal Zenfield, because we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. Thing. So what we're going to do is I'm going to run you quick through the specs, I'll talk about the add-ons, we'll go through the minutia of the motorcycle, and then the really important part is the rider experience, the experience of owning this and having... It is a uh, 349cc single cylinder overhead cam, two valve, air cooled, Big five speed transmission, just a beautiful gem of an engine. All the torque is in the bottom. It produces uh, 20 horsepower, 20 foot pounds of torque, which is about 27 Newton meters. But all that torque is right over idle. I mean, you just kind of lope around. It's the perfect state park bike. It's quiet. It's got loads of uh, torque. It, you know, it, it moves around slowly very well. It just does that, this kind of riding perfectly. Just an incredibly good transmission too, by the way. That five-speed transmission is a real piece of art. Something I get asked a lot is, I put these aftermarket foot pegs on. Does this need to be changed or do I need a heel shifter? And I've come to the conclusion that you don't. And I, so the uh, wheelbase on something like this is 54.7 inches. That's 1,389 millimeters. Ground clearance, if you look at there's quite a bit of ground clearance. And that's a good thing for a camp bike. 6.7 inches, 170 millimeters. The seat height, and this is kind of hard to believe, 31.7 inches, that's 105 millimeters. So that, this bike is supposed to weigh with a full tank of fuel, 430 pounds. That's the heaviest of the 350s. It's 195 kilograms. Uh, fuel tank, 3.4 gallons. So it gets, it's got quite a range. Tires on this thing, the front is a 190-19, and the rear is a 120-80-18. And now with 3,600 miles on it, I'm, uh, you know, I'm constantly wondering about what I'm going to need for a tire. You know, the thing should have to be replaced at some point, but it's, so far it's it's wearing really well. So those are the basic specs on the bike. Oh, uh, it's 41 millimeter forks. Travels about 5.1 inches. It's 100. I think that's 130 millimeters. The rear travels about four inches. That's 102 millimeters. Front disc is 300 millimeters. Single disc, Bibery, uh, ABS brakes. The rear is a. Uh, Here's a good one. The rear is 270 millimeters. It's a single pot, Bybri again. I think the brakes on this are just, you know, this bike is built to do a specific job and it does it really well. It does everything from zero to 70 miles an hour in, in perfection, I, I believe. I just love riding this thing. I just absolutely love riding this thing. It has become my general motorcycle. The other bikes have become specific purpose bikes. I had to go on a long ride the other day. Uh, had to get there quick and get back, so I took the Triumph. You know, if I want to ride dirt, I take the uh, Himalayan. This is a great overall motorcycle. It's well-behaved, good-mannered. It does everything just right and easy, and you know, it does everything but go fast. Is like I like is what I like to say. If you enjoy the art of motorcycle riding, the tactile feel of leaning and you know balancing and shifting gears and you know using the clutch and brake and you know the harmony of making all those things work together. This is a motorcycle that lets you exercise all that to its fullest. And I think it's uh, just a joy to ride. It, it's just an absolute joy to ride. Let's talk a little bit about the handling of this motorcycle. Uh, we'll start in the garage. It's the easiest thing to maneuver in a, in a tight spot in a garage. You know, I've got a three, a two car garage. I've opened the door. I've got my bike sitting there. This is the easiest one to roll out. It's got the shortest wheelbase. It, it has the greatest turn to turn so you can get you know, you can get it flipped around easily. It does everything just super simple. It feels really light, even though it's about the same weight as the other ones. And I think the reason there is the very low, again, center of gravity. So in the garage is awesome. The driveway, it's awesome. In a parking lot, uh, once you start moving this thing, even at two or three or four or five miles an hour, this thing is just, it's just absolutely perfect bike to ride. It just, it's very cooperative, friendly, easy going. Um, that's why I guess it would make a great beginner's bike in that sense. Uh, and from my point of view, it just allows me to not think about motorcycle riding. It allows me to just enjoy the ride, so to speak. Uh, from there on up to, uh, you know, around town, I, I love this as a town bike. And I actually ride it pretty aggressively around town sometimes. I just, you know, I, I, I can go anywhere I want. I can spin around in a circle. I can go this direction, that direction. It just does everything beautifully. And, you know, very light feeling, very light, very well-mannered in that sense. Again, I keep using the word well-mannered. And the reason I do that is 
it's a very discipline it's, it's just a, it's a very well made it just does it does what you want when you want it to do it and it doesn't give you any grief it's very well mannered uh on the highway i do a loads of uh blacktop with it i did 190 miles the other day i stayed below 60 on purpose i got over 70 miles a gallon on the on the fuel tank and uh, that, I mean, Nandun or something, I think it's a good name of the guy, but he talks, he talks about the rhythm of the motorcycle matching the rhythm of the heart. I actually believe that. I think the more you ride this bike, especially at those speeds, 50 to 60 miles an hour, it really, really seems to just kind of gel with the soul. I, I was calling it massaging the soul. It massages your soul. You know, it just becomes a real comfortable, easygoing, beautiful thing. Now, I was going through the beautiful Lus Hills of Iowa. Spent the afternoon doing that on this thing, early evening, and I just... It was just a very enjoyable, you know, thing. I left my house. I was agitated, stressed, worked up about something or another. 50 miles later, I remember thinking, I was on the bike. I remember, I literally remember thinking, what was I upset about? What was I upset about? And you know what? Who cares, right? <laughs> the bike was doing its job. You know, so there's a, you know, an art, the art of the motorcycle, the zen feeling of the motorcycle, the relaxing feeling of the bike, the uh, predictability, the... Uh, there's so many attributes that this bike has that makes it such a wonderful little motorcycle. It is little, by the way. It's a small bike, physically small. Let's jump up a little bit to interstates. The interstate is a place I've had it a few times. I only go on the interstate when I have 10 miles or less to go and when the wind is at my back. If, the wind's, if it's end of the wind, I won't do it. Uh, with the wind at my back, I can get this up to 70, 75 pretty easy. And it will uh, actually bounce off the speed limiter at 75. Uh, the nemesis, the two nemesis of this motorcycle, its arch enemy is the wind. If, if you're going into the wind, a headwind, this thing will slow right down. You've got a 20 mile an hour headwind, you're gonna, you're gonna be going 50 miles an hour. This thing just has, it just have, doesn't have the, the power to go any better. And then the, its nemesis is the hill. If you're going up hills, it'll start slowing down. And you know, for the most part, at least where I live, that isn't really an issue because it'll slow down to, you know, 55, 60, and, and that's okay. You know, 50, 55, no big deal. But the headwind, if I've got a long ride, let's say I gotta go 50 miles in a direction and I'm going into the wind, it becomes a it becomes a battle. One of the interesting things about this is the different models that this comes in. This is a stealth black model. You know, it's kind of a classic style, but it's got the modern paint and the mag wheels and all that neat stuff. Uh, they make a Halcyon series. Those are all this just beautiful paint colors and, you know, greens and they call it gray, but it's actually blue and just, just fabulous things. And they also make the Signal Series, which are kind of the military-esque style bikes, which they also have a Chrome Series, Chrome and Red and Chrome and Bronze. And uh, I really wanted the Chrome Series, <laughs> but I also wanted to be able to, you know, I, I don't keep my bike super clean, as you can tell. And I thought the Chrome Series would just be a lot of work and you know, it would just be a lot of work to keep the thing clean. Uh, Add-ons that I've added to this bike. I Baxter Cycle put the large pegs on it for me. The bags. I had wanted a different style bag, but that was on the military version. I wanted one bag on one side. They put these bags on here, and I've just been thrilled with them. I take this grocery shopping. I'll pack those bags up. They have extenders that go up. And I mean to tell you, I can really get a lot of stuff in there. They're pretty, pretty decent bags. I have this one open right now. I've added this little pouch here for little essentials. Back so I can put the touring seat on here. So I've got, uh, you know, the, the added comfort of that. On the uh, front, let's see. I've got these sensors that I can tie to my phone to check my tire pressure. I check, I check my tire pressure on any bike I ride every day. I, but uh, let's see, what else have I added to this? I think that's it, my friends. Oh, my Indian flag Bigfoot. Uh, shortcomings of this motorcycle, there are a couple. We've already talked about speed. The uh, one I'm going to point out right away is the kickstand. I think is too small. I wish that was a bigger one, and I don't know. I'm going to do something about that. I'm not sure what yet, but I'll figure something out. Uh, the other one is the mirrors, and I've talked about this before. The mirrors vibrate, and uh, I've been paying a lot of attention to that. And at 50 miles an hour, they don't vibrate. At 50 miles an hour, they're smooth. Uh, 55, they start to vibrate, and by 60, they're it's a full-on blur. The other thing to talk about with this is the dash area. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. It's a simple dash. 
but it's you know it's flat it's close to the tank it's you have to literally look down to see it when i, when I have this helmet on my three-quarter helmet it, i can just you know glance down with my eyes but when i have my full face up but when i have my full face helmet on i have to literally tilt my head down so i can see past the bottom chin of the helmet uh, it's also very limited in what it has it's a big speedo there's of course no tack very little information you know it does have a trip one trip two and a fuel gauge, digital fuel gauge right there. But it's a, kind of a nice thing. So that's the limitation. Uh, it's also the benefit of this bike. That allows you the uh, option of not paying attention to those kind of things. You don't have to worry about it. The bike only goes, you know, you can tell when you're going over 60, it releases you from those things. It's something you don't have to think about or pay attention to it. Frees your mind, frees your mind. You can enjoy the scenery. You can enjoy this, you know, the beauty of the nature around you, the park. You know, it's part of that Zen thing I was talking about. I love it. I love it. So at 3,700 miles, I'll have 3,800 miles by the time I get home. What do I think of the bike? Well, you already know, don't you? I just love this thing. I love this thing. I am probably going to end up with uh, close to 10,000 before the season's over on it. It's just been a thrill to ride. I really appreciate it. Um, I got this at Baxter Cycle. You can go to BaxterCycle.com and... Uh, Pick yourself up one. They they get they sell like mad. So when they get them in, they go right out. So you might want to talk to them about that. But uh, they also got all my accessories there, all my add-ons, you know, all the bags. And they have that stuff in stock, and they ship nationwide. So if you're interested in anything like that. By the way, they ship motorcycles nationwide. And, uh, that's not something they really emphasize a lot, but I see them do that all the time. Uh, they have, you know, a whole bunch of vintage bikes that they sell. They also ship their new bikes nationwide. So get a hold of those guys if you're interested. Anyway, love the bike, love this beautiful park, and I, Fuzzy Biker, I'm going to go hop on that hot rod and go for a ride. Now, if it's nice where you're at, you all go out and do the same. Wahoo!